So what if I model my own face and then I 3D print it and I can get like a Phantom of the Opera mask or something like that? Well, that'd be great, but how do I model my own face? I think I have a solution. So I pulled out the Creality Ferret Scanner, scanned my own face, and then headed to FreeCAD to make a custom mask to fit my face. All right, so I've been able to import my face into FreeCAD, and uh, I noticed it made my cheeks look a lot wider than they normally do. I have my wife as a witness, so <laughs> just if you scan your head, scan your whole head so your cheeks don't look quite as wide. Uh, okay, so let's jump in by approximating our uh, mesh here into a surface. Now, if you've done your face or anything like that, you can always uh, right-click and transform. And you can do all sorts of things if you want to align it to something that isn't the bottom, right? This might be more like the front if you wish to realign it. Um, but I'm okay with the way it is. So let's head on over to the surface workbench. And I think I like that better up here. Let's choose curve on mesh. We're gonna choose start. And I'm gonna start by just selecting two points, right? We're doing two point curve. And then when I've done that, I right click and create. There's a few ways of doing this. Uh, you know, there's a way that you can uh, go to the part workbench and then say you know create shape from mesh and and things like that to get the mesh editable uh, but since this is an infinitely thin mesh right it's more of a surface i guess a mesh surface if you will uh, i i think approximating this into a surface is probably my best bet so i'm going to make a series of two point approximation splines across this mesh and I'm going to do so relatively close together. And then one thing I want to point out is I blinked, right? That's pretty easy to see. And you can tell that this mesh goes over and under and around itself. And that's not going to be great for approximation. That's not the scanner's fault. The scanner did a brilliant job. It's just, you know, you have a human being. So I'm going to just draw out a mesh spline across my eyes because I don't think that that's going to be workable uh, when I right click and say create of course that looks like a straight line just like all these other straight lines but when I go to alter my view when this is all done computing you can tell it's taking a while to compute because this is a crazy mesh to have to approximate so I wouldn't even say this is FreeCAD's fault this is just a huge computation thing that we're watching All right, now that we have this, uh, you know what, that one wasn't too bad. Yeah, let's do another one. Uh, if I click Start, and then Create. Uh, there we go. I just have to hide my, hide the mesh. It was deceivingly simple looking. Um, look at how the spline goes over and around itself. That's what I was trying to point out. I thought I was going crazy when it didn't do that. That strange behavior is because I blinked. So I am going to omit the splines that overloop themselves like that because that would not be conducive to a very good uh, approximation. That would just mess up the loft. All right, so we'll head on back to uh, surface and keep going. I'll fast forward this so you don't watch me drawing tedious splines and then I'll see you when I'm ready for the next step. All right, so I've uh, made a little room for any part of the mesh that would uh, be messed up by my eyes. We'll close that. And now I can probably hide my face mesh. And we can run a uh, section, right? We'll click Add Edge. And we just start building a surface off of these edges. Sometimes it'll get really messy. 
but it also can get better when we click on subsequent lines right there it is messy messy and then I think it's going to start to get cleaner again part of this is I have a beard and if you really want to have a clean loft avoid beards it got a little bit messier on the last one do I actually need it if I remove that last line of course the uh, curvature can make some things look worse than they are and some things look better than they are, right? So it's just a matter of being careful here. I think that'll be okay. Next, let's... Uh, FreeCAD isn't made to edit surfaces, but sometimes you can get away with it. So let's just try to do this early on here. Now the part design makes sketching really easy, so I'm actually just going to use an empty part design body for my sketches. And I'll use the view cube here and flip my view over. You can tell the way I made the lines apparently might be a little bit lopsided. Also, I'm looking at the back, so let's go sketch. Uh, we'll exit our sketch actually, but with our sketch highlighted here, we're going to say under data map reverse is true. And that way we'll be looking at the other side of the sketch. So when I go double click on the sketch, we should be looking at the front. Yep. Great. Next, let me sketch out a construction line. And this would act as sort of an unofficial center line. I'll put it just on the inside of my approximated surface. And I'll mark right about the middle of my face. It's not perfect, but I don't think these imperfections in the surface are really going to be a big factor. They just look like it due to the shading, I think. I'll print it out and try this mask on and see if I change my mind about that. So I'm making a spline here. And our points should meet. That's great. And then there it is. I'll select my spline and my midpoint, my midline, and I'll simply choose mirror. And that seems to be rather centered, so we'll close that. Actually, before I close that. I'll also make a large driving circle and then we'll close that. We'll go to part. We're going to choose extrude. We're going to make sure that this is solid. Symmetric. We'll go a distance of a meter and apply. And my extrude is broken. Let's see what's going on. Looks like in the mirror we may have some broken, there we go. Didn't see that one come and I thought all my points were connected, but it can happen to everyone. So we'll close that and there we have a proper extrude. I'm going to choose my surface, hold control, choose my extrude. We're going to do a cut and this is the warning, right? Uh, when we do this on surfaces, we, it may not work, but sometimes you can get away with it. And it looks like we got away with it. Great. Yeah, I like the way that that turned out. That's kind of cool. Uh, we want to cut out my eyes, which is a very strange thing to say. Uh, I think this might be the only context that I would ever want to say, let's cut out my eyes. But let's make <laughs> some eye cuts, because it will be a mask after all. So we'll, again, make sure that our body is active by double clicking, create a sketch, same plane. I'm going to draw a rough center line. As with all things organic like this, some proximity will do. All right, with that center line drawn, I'll change my view to wireframe. And then I can show my face mesh. 
and I really do want to map reverse this, so I'll close my sketch. We'll again go back to data. And we're going to say map reverse is true. Double click on the sketch. Now we're looking at the other side, and there you can see the eyes very well. So that's what I do in my visual settings to look at a mesh in a little bit better detail. Uh, I still should, oh, looks like my center line flipped when I did the map reverse, so I'll just refine about where the middle is. I'm going to say right about there. Although it's not quite centered on the nose, right? It's hard with faces. You know, there's a lot going on here, right? Is my face completely level? Is, you know, lots of things going on, but it won't, you know, we're making, we're talking about really small stuff that just looks big here, in my opinion. So we're going to mark out something for the eye. That looks like we are closed. Don't want to make the same mistake twice. And then... We'll do the same thing. Click, click, and mirror. Almost looks like I got some funky sunglasses. Huh. All right, so we'll close that. Part again. Extrude. We are creating a solid. I'll say a meter, symmetric, so we don't have to worry about which direction we're going, and close. We'll change our view back to as is. Ugh, man, that's kind of uncanny to see your own face like that. All right, so we'll choose we'll choose our cut, hold control, choose our extrude, and make a cut. We'll see if we can get away with doing this on a non-solid. And we can't, I think. Maybe there's something active in our view here. Oh. Hey, yeah, that worked. That's kind of cool. Okay, super. Uh, so I just had I had my mesh showing, and that was throwing me off. Sweet. Okay, next. Maybe we can make this thick. So we'll go to part. And we'll make sure that we have fill offset checked. I'm going to try my look at 2 millimeters. And we'll say OK. Uh, th this is the tricky part because you're, re you're really going to be constrained by your uh, thickness. So if your minimum curve, like you have a little curve like this, right? And you're liable to get some big errors. And you can tell, right, this, is, this wasn't a perfect thicken because we have all these places where the surface is overlapping with itself. Anywhere that you have a curvature, whose radius is less than two millimeters on a two millimeter thickness is going to have some kind of wonky error like this. But it looks like we're able to generate a good enough solid that we could actually print this and see. Uh, so yeah, let's give it a print and see how it goes. Again, watch the minimum radius of curvature. You might just have to live with a thinner thicken if... Uh, <laughs> That's a thinner thicken if uh, if you run into problems. But uh, the, yeah, this looks like it might be a pretty cool thing. I'm definitely going to have to use support material to print this out. I don't know if there's a way around that. Okay, super. Well, let's get this set up in my printer software. Let's get it printed and see how it goes. So this is how it turned out. It fits my face perfectly. It would have looked cooler to have made it a little bit wider, but I wanted to save material. Uh, we got a little bit of distortion on the nose. Obviously, and unsurprisingly, that's where we had fewer uh, uh, lines, fewer cross sections to support it. But uh, you can hardly tell. It still fits my face great. And uh, I'm really happy with it. So it, it fits absolutely perfect and it handled my beard really well right I've got a thick beard and the scanner handled it just fine and when I push up I can just feel the whole thing press up against my face it feels kind of strange because things don't normally fit your face this well but yeah so you can scan your face and it works out great hope this video was helpful if it was please subscribe see you in the next one